Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to be learning to navigate the Godot engine. The first thing we'll go over is the hub or the project manager, and then we'll go over the Godot engine's UI. The point of this video is to get you comfortable moving around the engine and not being afraid to break anything. So before we start, if you haven't downloaded the game engine yet, that's the first thing you're going to want to do. When you download and open the engine for the first time, you're going to see the hub or the project manager. And if you don't have a project created yet, you'll see a please confirm window. It'll say open asset library or cancel. When you click open asset library, it brings you over to the templates. Now we're not gonna use these in this video, but if you're interested in this, feel free to go through and check them out. So let's come back to the project list and we'll see sort and search. These are options for searching for projects if you have many projects in here. And then in the right hand corner, you'll see this EN. If you click the drop down. This gives you a bunch of language options. Next are all these buttons on the right. You'll see that some of these are grayed out, and they're grayed out because you don't have a project yet. But when you do have a project, edit is how you open your project. Run will run the build of your game. Scan will scan through your project as it says. And then what we'll be doing soon is new project. Import. If someone shares a project with you, or if you find a project elsewhere, you can import it. And then of course we have rename or remove. The last things to point out are the engine version at the top here. And if you wanna exit the project manager, there's a button down at the bottom that says exit, and then you can close the window, and then you can also close the prompt window. Each of these will close the game engine. Let's move on to creating a new project. When you start a new project, you're going to want to give it a name and you're gonna to wanna to save it somewhere. Next, you wanna choose the renderer that you're going to be using. OpenGL ES 3.0 or OpenGL ES 2.0. And the differences between these are the visual quality. So 2.0 is for web games or lower end mobile devices. Some features aren't available, but if they are, they're available in alternative ways, cheaper ways. For now, we're just going to choose 3.0 and as soon as we click create and edit, we'll open up the game engine. Let's move on to the engine UI. So in the top left, we have our menu bar. And then in the middle, this is our toolbar. I kind of consider this our view mode. We can switch between the 2D engine and the 3D engine. By default, the engine opens to 3D. And then Godot has its own built-in script editor. And then next to that, we have an asset library. This is a lot like the templates in the project manager. To the right of this, we have the build settings. In the future, you'll be able to play your game from here. And if you remember when we chose between the render settings, you can change that here as well. Next up, we have scene. You can think of this as a hierarchy list of everything that's in your scene. To show you an example, we'll click the plus icon and then we'll choose spatial. These are known as nodes. We'll go over more of these nodes in future videos. After we click create, we made a node in the scene hierarchy and we made it appear in the viewport. Now onto the next window, we have the inspector. While you have an object or a node selected, you'll see various properties show up for it. Next, we have the file system. This is where your resources are saved. In other engines, this may be known as your project or your project manager. Last but not least, we have our miscellaneous bar. This is where we have our output, debugger, audio, and animation. The output window, if you click on it, it'll open up. This is like console and other game engines, this is where you'll get logged information from the engine or from when you're scripting. The debugger, audio, and animation, we'll cover each of those in a later video, but they are here. If you click on any of these labels and click it again, you'll collapse that window. The last thing I wanna cover is moving the windows around. There's two ways you can do it. Next to each one of these windows are three dots. And when you click on them, you'll see dock position. You can click on any one of these to move them to different quadrants. Another way that you can move the windows around are just by grabbing it and dragging and dropping. Now the only catch here is that if you try and drag and drop it, you'll see a no sign for wherever you can't put it. All right guys, in the next video, we're gonna cover navigating the viewports. If you guys thought this video was helpful, please let me know by commenting down below and liking this video.